Hello, I'm going to demonstrate the conservation of momentum. When the net force on a system is equal to zero, the total momentum remains constant. We're going to see how that applies to a number of different objects. I'm going to start with uh, two objects of equal mass. I'm going to let those objects float on this frictionless surface. Here I have some air coming in through this tube. It comes up through some little holes and allows those uh, cars to float on this surface in a frictionless manner. Now, if I have one car at rest, and the other car comes up with a certain speed and bumps into it, watch what happens as the momentum flows from one car to the other, illustrating the conservation of momentum. So we see that the momentum initially in the first car gets transferred to the second car. That happens with cars of equal mass. It also happens if the cars have a different mass. Now if I have a car with twice the mass of the one at rest, and it comes up and bumps into it, the same principle applies, but the results are slightly different. Also, if the large mass is initially at rest, and the small mass bumps into it, again the results are different, but the same principle applies, conservation of momentum. The momentum lost by one object is gained by the second object. Now, if I have two cars of equal mass and they come up and bump into one another, coming from opposite directions, then the momentum of one we can say is positive and the other would be negative in such a way that the total momentum adds up to zero. So that when they come to uh, uh, the point of collision, the momentum is going to be zero to start with, and it'll be zero throughout the collision, even at the time when they're both instantaneously at rest, and it'll be zero after, as the uh, momentum of the total system remains constant because the total net force is equal to zero. So we see that they essentially just bounce apart from one another, and if they were to start in a compressed position and I release it so that the total force again is zero, uh, they'll move apart with equal uh, momenta but opposite directions. So that one is positive and one is negative, the total momentum remains constant. Now if the cars have different uh, bumpers, these bumpers are a little stiffer, we'll see that the same principle applies doesn't matter how stiff the bumpers are. In fact, we can have a car with a flexible bumper and a car with a stiff bumper, and we see that the same thing happens. Conservation of momentum. In fact, it even happens with magnetic forces. Here I have some cars with some little magnets attached. If I have a car that's initially at rest and a car, another car comes up to it, and bumps into it, we're going to have a magnetic repulsion between these two magnets attached here to the top of each of these cars, and we'll see that that magnetic force works the same way. This car is at rest, and this car comes up, makes a collision. Let's try that one more time. Then the car initially moving stops, and the other car picks up the momentum. Similarly, if we start with them close together and we let those magnets push apart from one another so that the total net force is equal to zero. Conservation of momentum. Now, on the other end I have magnets that attract. These two magnets attract one another so that if one car comes up and hits the other and those magnets cause those two cars to stick together, then what would you expect would happen? Well, this car and this car will both move off at a common speed, and let's watch what happens there. And of course the speed is half of the original speed of the first car because the mass now is double, indicating that it's the mass times velocity for the total system that remains constant. Conservation of momentum.